So I'm going to talk about uh, historic landscape opportunities. So I'm wanting us to think not only about uh, conservation, protection, so on, but how we might capitalize on, use the uh, rich resource which we have in the historic landscape to help us address issues of things like climate change and the problems that it brings. Um, and the talk is related to landscape character, which is a concept that I think is now well understood. And um, I think these kind of challenges provide us with actually a useful way to use some of this data for landscape character in, in the historic landscape characterizations and so on, which have been created over the last 20, 25 years or so, and which in some ways have rather struggled to find as many uses as we, we, we thought they might be able to. But I think this is a a, an area where they where they could. Um, we know that landscapes are created through local uh, processes and practices. I, I've, start, I've been using this quite overusing this slide recently, just because I love this quotation. For this is from William Marshall, who was one of the agricultural improvement writers in the late 18th century, and obviously they're all kind of advocating the you know profitable use of land. Uh, but Marshall's wandering around northwest Devon where it's wet and rainy and a lot of cows and you know has ideas about how they could get rid of all the culm grasslands and so on and improve the general environment. But he comes across all these farmers and they're all attached to their clotted cream. And he, and he can't really understand why exactly. I think this is the pointer. But he says, uh, yeah, there's this cream which is usually served up in clouts. And he says, if the West of England farmers prefer the pleasures of the palate to the profits of the dairy, it might be extremely improper in anyone to censure them for continuing their present system of dairy management. And of course, that system, which allows them to go off on their junkets, uh, eating clotted cream, is what's created that landscape. And that landscape, you know, is one which has developed in that region over thousands of years, absolutely thousands of years, and you know, in a way is well kind of adapted. And there are many benefits that we can find in that landscape and its uh, historic forms of management. Here it is, this is the area which is now submerged under the Roadford Reservoir in Northwest Devon. And you can see it's kind of characteristic. This is comb grassland in the bottom, historic boundaries, little patches of woodland and so on. So the question is, what benefits can we derive? How can we, how can we think about the benefits this might deliver to us in terms of uh, climate change challenges? Uh, and this is just the same area depicted on the Devon historic landscape characterization. And I think using this kind of characterization data, as I hope I'll show, can help us find ways to address some of these issues. So uh, recently, we've been doing, I've been doing some work with my colleague Filippo Brandolini in uh, Italy, looking at some of these questions. So uh, this is a, an area of the northern Apennines in uh, Italy called Veto. And here we've been looking at various different issues. So for example, we've been looking at uh, modeling soil erosion caused by flooding and uh, modeling the impact of soil erosion in this area under different land management practices. So like all parts of Europe, this is an area that's seen significant change in the second half of the 20th century. And those changes here have led to increasingly rapid soil erosion um, for reasons we don't need to go into this morning. But we can model the potential impact of different land management practices and one of the things that's been very hard for people looking at soil erosion to deal with is the what they call the C factor, the cultural factor in the soil erosion. And we've uh, found that the landscape characterization for this area can actually help us inform our understanding of soil erosion in quite a useful way. Uh, and we can model what this is looking like under, with different types of historic landscape character, the, the extent of erosion. Um, in the same area, we've been looking at uh, another historic, traditional historic type of management here, which is agro agroforestry. So this is an area where the, there are trees, well, were trees grown. You can see them 
growing around the village here. And it's a sort of polycropping, was a sort of polycropping area with trees grown, vines grown up the trees, and then cereals cultivated under the trees. So absolutely splendid. Um, turns out this was also marvellous for reducing um, soil erosion, the imp impact of soil erosion, and stopping flooding by retaining water in the, in the systems of the hillsides. So here we can see two examples where we've, we've got, you know, a really uh, tangible kind of grip on the benefits that these historic character types can deliver. And there's been other types of work. For example, in Belgium, colleagues have been looking at the potential of historic hedgerows to capture soil erosion, uh, to, sorry, to capture carbon. Uh, and the uh, differences between the, 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 the carbon content of the soil beneath these historic hedgerows compared to in areas that are under intensive cultivation right next, next door. And you can imagine how we can address, we can study these uh, uh, benefits from woodland, from meadows, from uh, historic field patterns, from hedgerows, whatever it is. And then we can try to uh, think about how we might apply that knowledge. So uh, we did some work last year for Historic England and for the Environment Agency. Just uh, an initial piece of work with uh, my colleague Pete Herring and Chris Savara to understand whether the historic characterizations that have been produced might be used to think about, think about this, and we resolved that they could be used uh, in relation, in particular, in this case, to flooding and natural capital scenarios. These are kind of flood, flood management scenarios, but thinking about how we can uh, use the historic landscape character to guide uh, the, the responses that we make, what kind of um, flood mitigation scenarios we're going to use, what the impact of those is going to be on the historic landscape, and, and importantly, where we can actually think about strengthening the historic character of an area and developing the historic character, perhaps by uh, choosing to implement new, you know, not just restoring old hedgerows or old bits of woodland, but choosing to develop uh, new in-character um, features within the landscape, which will have these um, benefits. So here's an example. This is uh, just drawn from our, our little report. Uh, this is about the potential benefits for different historic character types of planting new hedgerows or restoring hedgerows. And uh, we, won't, we don't need to talk about the detail of that now. But we can map that out at kind of county scale. So here's Oxfordshire, here's um, Devon, looking at the different benefits or negative impacts of hedgerow planting in that area, dark blue being negative here and pale being positive. Obviously, we don't want to go planting hedgerows all over Dartmoor because it's going to make an horrible mess of the landscape character and all the uh, marvellous uh, values that we associate with it. But there are plenty of places where we could plant hedgerows, strengthen the character, and have real significant benefits in this case for flood management. Um, we can compare our, these are just comparing our different scenarios, helping us to target and choose what will be appropriate responses in different areas. Um, and so we can feed this into our landscape characterization in combination with lots of other types of approaches, perhaps like the ones that Iris was just telling us about. Um, other types of computer modeling, looking at things like soil erosion, flooding, and, and so on and so forth, to enrich our response and help us to you know, really address appropriate responses which are going to have significant benefits guided by the historic landscape, the historic character of each area. <laughs>